Alrighty, um, hello YouTube, welcome back to my channel. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I am Cryptic Coil, and in today's video, uh, I have a book haul for you. Um, it's mostly vintage young adult horror or vintage uh, middle grade horror, um, some vintage Apple paperbacks um, for like even younger kids than that, a couple of DVDs to go with it. I got a new axe, you know, a new electric guitar that I'm super stoked about. Um, and since um, Halloween season is right around the corner, I did a spirit Halloween haul. And I will be showing you all of it um, in this video. All right. Um, first things first. Uh, you, you know, uh, let's uh, let me show you the Halloween spirit haul. Okay, so last year um, I bought this uh, Phantom of the Opera mask. I'll go ahead and throw it on real quick, okay? Um, I don't think it was really a Phantom of the Opera mask. Um, I think it was just like a masquerade um, mask, but I like to go as Phantom of the Opera sometimes, and so I bought this last year. Um, even though I didn't use it, I didn't go anywhere or do anything. I just felt like being lazy and ultimately stayed home. Hang on, let me see if I can... I think that looks okay. Well, this year I bought a top hat to go with it. It's kind of a velvet um like material on the outside. Um it's kind of fitted. It's like like it it, it fits on my head and it doesn't really move a whole lot. So I mean, I think that this would go great with <clears throat> with it. You know, I also have a white shirt um and I also have um like a really cool cape that totally matches this hat so that was you know pretty exciting um <clears throat> uh i really like the crackle um pattern on this mask um it makes it look uh more vintage it look makes it look aged um and it's supposed to be white but sometimes white um things like white plastic or you know wood that gets painted white um yellows with age and so they kind of did that and sometimes it even browns with age they kind of did that around the eye um and i think that this uh top hat just goes really well with it there's kind of a a, a flower i don't know if that's supposed to be a corsage or something um and a little skull thing on the inside of the flower nice little touch um i'm a huge scream fan right so i bought this t-shirt right and I was like, yes, you know, a really cool shirt with a ghost face um, holding the, you know, bloody, uh, blood-drenched knife. But anyway, I put it on just to make this video, and I realized that ghost face is throwing the bird. Now, I can't, I, I don't really want to walk around town wearing that. Um, and I, I definitely can't wear it to work. So I'm pretty sure I saved the receipt, which is why I'm going to go exchange this later. Um, because I, I just, I, I can't wear this. Um, I, I wore it, um, I put it on to make this video, and then I, I looked in the mirror, and I was like, ah, oh, I'm like, I'm a grown man. I, I'm not going to wear something like that. The closest thing that I would wear to that is like that t-shirt of Johnny Cash and Elvis Presley together and Johnny Cash is throwing the bird. But it's like, those are real dudes and they're like real important and they've made like a real impact on like culture and society. So, I mean, I, I can, you know, show them respect, but I mean, I, I can't wear a cartoon killer throwing the bird. All right, hang on a sec. Uh, Y'all don't be looking now. I'm doing something evil while I'm on camera. Hang on. Some of you know what I just did. Some of you don't. That's okay. All right. Um, I also bought this super dope ghost face hockey jersey. Okay. I mean, this thing is sick. It ran me like 40 bucks, um, but uh, I'm very proud to own it. They also had um, like a Friday the 13th one with Jason. And I mean, I've seen, you know, all of the Friday the 13th movies, but that is just not my franchise. Uh, I, I like Jason. I like his, the aesthetic and all that that's going on there. But that is just not my franchise. So I went with the Ghostface one instead. Um, 
and I, I think it looks really cool. I like it on the back that it says 96. Um, this uh, um, woman that I work with, she's a supervisor uh, where I work. She wears her Michael Myers one, and it's, it says like the Haddonfield Slashers, and it has says 78 on the back. So uh, that's pretty cool. But uh, yeah, uh, I can't wait to rock this uh, ghost face um, hockey jersey. Um, one sec, sorry. Um, I also bought me a couple of super dope uh, um, trucker hats. This one is a Nightmare on Elm Street one because uh, Nightmare on Elm Street is my franchise. Um, so, you know, it says Springwood High on it, which I think is really cool. And it also um, has the Nightmare on Elm Street tag on the side. Um, I just love the blood splatter all over it. Um, some of you guys who watched my channel might have seen that guitar that I, you know, sanded down and repainted, Countess Mina, with the blood splatter. So, yeah, I mean, I... Even my shoes right now, like I have these Adidas uh, shoes and they're um, signature shoes for this NBA player named, uh, oh my, Donovan Mitchell. I, I wanted to say Damian Lillard again. It's Donovan Mitchell um, uh, who currently plays for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Um, well, he's a huge Spider-Man fan. And so these are his Venom editions and that's the back. Um, there's blood splatter on the side. Like, I'm sure you can see it. Um, there used to be, uh, like a white, um, vinyl, um, venom eye glued on, but you know, it's <clears throat> since fallen off, but these are some of my favorite shoes ever. Uh, um, but yeah, so I, I, I like blood splatter. I even have some blood splatter on my shoes. Okay, and then um, I also got me this uh, Scream um, trucker hat. And I don't like that it says, you like scary movies. I wish it said, do you like scary movies? Because um, that was the line. Um, and there's no tag on the side like there is on the... Uh, um, Nightmare on Elm Street one, but there's a little ghost face tag near the snapback. And then, um, you know, there's a, a ghost face tag on the inside. Um, I, I think it looks, you know, pretty cool. Um, I dig it. Uh, except I think I'm going to rock it like that. Or no, let me put it to the side for now. All right. So, uh, yeah, that's... Yeah, so I'm going to wear this hat for the rest of the video. Okay. Now, you know what? Let me rock the uh, Nightmare on Elm Street one because it's got the blood splatter. So I think it goes with my shoes better, even though it goes uh, the Scream one goes with my shirt better. Okay. All right. So um, I got that. And then one more thing. Um, so I decided I'm going to start collecting masks. So... Um, I, I bought this uh, Freddy Krueger um, latex mask. I mean, it looks so good. It looks so good. Um, I go to thrift stores, and I buy these every so often. These are mannequin heads that they use in beauty colleges. Um, some chick named Becky, I guess, used to, because, of course, that was her name. Anyway, uh, I guess this was her head. Well, I buy these from thrift stores, and you can find styrofoam ones too, um, but uh, um, that's how I stand these up and display them. I, I want to buy a bookshelf um, where I just put these um, you know, masks. Well, since I bought the Freddy mask, I had to buy the hat to match, and um, on the inside you have Freddy Krueger's colors. And at first I was going to buy a different one and it was like almost 10 bucks cheaper. This one was $35, um, the Freddy Krueger fedora. And I, for a second there, I was totally tempted to buy the cheaper one, uh, but it was a different shade than this. 
and I was like, oh, they're charging more for this one just because it's Nightmare on Elm Street and it's associated with Freddy and they know they can, but eh, whatever. I decided to just, you know, buy it anyway. Well, oh, and this Freddy Krueger mask, this is the one from Nightmare on Elm Street 4, uh, the Dream Master. There were different ones, but I thought this was the coolest, so this is the one I went with. Um, and, uh, I noticed that they also had a Goosebumps, the Haunted Mask, uh, latex mask, and it looked really cool, it looked really good, and I wanted to buy it, but the tag was beat to crap, and I, I'm gonna leave the, this tag on all my masks, you know, just to maintain the resale value, and since that tag was just beat to crap, I just didn't want it, it just kind of turned me off, so, um, right now, uh, um, I have this on top of one of the other bookshelves over there, that's where I also have my aged ghost face mask, but yeah, that's my spirit Halloween haul, all right, um, let's go ahead and get into the books, okay, um, let's get into the books, all right, so um, let's start with the adult books first because I only have a few, and um, <clears throat> two of which are um, tour horror books. So the first uh, tour horror book that I have is called Cafe Purgatorium, and it's uh, three novels of horror and the fantastic by Dana Anderson, Charles DeLint, and Ray Garten. Um, And I don't, th it doesn't tell you what the three novels are on the back. Um, but this thing is in good condition, good, healthy spine holding onto the pages, you know, properly. Um, and that's my big thing when I buy these books from thrift stores. Uh, the cover's not bad, the spine's not too bad at all. Um, uh, the back, you know, isn't bad, the corners are, you know, great. But uh, the first, th or I'm sorry, the three books in here. Book one is called Cafe Purgatorium by Dana M. Anderson. Book two is called Dr. Crusadian's Method. Crusadian, huh? And that's by uh, Ray Garten. And then Death Leaves an Echo, the third book um, in this uh, bind-up, I guess. And that's by Charles DeLint. What year was this published? Um, this book here was published in uh, 1991 so yeah i mean this is definitely old school you know some of you watching this might not have even been alive yet so um so there's that um the next tour horror book that i have is called ghost dance by katherine to check i have no idea how to pronounce that but apparently she's the author of shadow eyes um she has an endorsement from someone named John Coyne, uh, <clears throat> and it reads, When it comes to horror fiction, Catherine Tachek is right up there with Straub and King. Um, and the tagline on the front reads, The dance began 100 years ago. It ends today. And here's what the cover looks like. Um, you know, pretty cool looking cover. There's a bird feather, uh, pen, a bird feather pen, um, and instead of ink dripping off the tip, it's blood. And there's some kind of, like, maze or computer code or something. You can't really see it on camera. You can kind of see it. Um, let's go ahead and read the summary on back. Crow feather. A death in Manhattan, a glistening feather lies near the body. A Native American rights activist arrives in San Diego. A gleaming feather waits on the hotel bureau. A brutal murder discovered in Las Vegas. A br brilliant feather is found at the scene. Chateau del Clin, a uh, drifting ex-professor, cannot let the Las Vegas murder go unsolved. The victim was a good friend. The shining feather will lead Chateau and his beautiful girlfriend, Sunny, into unimaginable horror. Horror that may encompass the entire world. 
unless Chateau can prevail against the renewal of the 100-year-old ghost dance. Um, I don't know if it sounds that good, to be honest, um, but this came out in the year 1990, and it's in great condition. Uh, the spine has some signs of wear, but it's not too bad at all. Um, the spine is perfectly healthy, and it's holding onto the pages. Um, the book offers resistance when I open it, so you know the spine is healthy, and the cover is in excellent condition. <clears throat> All right, and then I have one more um, adult book, and I'm very excited about this one because it's a Bentley Little. Okay, I like Bentley Little quite a bit. I've read um, a few of his books. Uh, th he has one novel that I've read that I don't like, and it's called The Ignored. And I actually enjoyed the process of reading the novel, but I was left unsatisfied with its conclusion. And then... Um, as I started to look at other people's reviews of the novel, um, what occurred to me was that the novel wasn't written for me. It was written for someone else. And the people that found that novel more relatable, they're the ones that actually really, really liked it because they found it relatable. I feel sorry for those people, and I don't mean that cr in a cruel way, but uh, I feel genuinely feel that those people are worthy of my sympathy um uh, but nevertheless <clears throat> they exist and <clears throat> they found um appeal in that novel whereas i did not and that's okay um but i found another bentley little book called the walking and he got another endorsement from stephen king on the cover and it says the Stephen King says the horror events of the year and um, the cover isn't too remarkable I mean it's got a beautiful uh, southwestern uh, sunset sky uh, and some shadows reflecting off of water or reflecting off a body of water let's read the back let's see what this book is all about Oh, he's, he got one from, Steve, from Dean Kuntz on the back, too. Dean Kuntz says, The Walking is a wonderful, fast-paced, rockin', joltin', shockin', contemporary terror fiction with believable characters and an unusually clever plot. Highly entertaining. All right, um, this is the synopsis on the back. It begins in a small southwestern town. Nailed it. Nailed. I said that that is a southwestern sunset sky. Nailed it. Okay. It begins in a small southwestern town. Then it spreads. Across the country, a series of strange deaths have overtaken the living, and a stranger compulsion has overtaken the dead. In a travesty of life, they drift with bizarre purpose toward an unknown destination. The walkers have become an obsession for investigator Miles Werdeen. Um, his father is one of them. Now lured into the shadow of the restless dead, Miles is a step closer to a secret as old as time, to a reality as dark as hell, for Miles is following them into the deep end of an unfathomable nightmare. Um, you know, sounds okay. It sounds okay. It's Bentley Little. All right, so uh, this was from November of 2000, I guess. Um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a shot. You know, I didn't like the ignored, but I did enjoy the experience of reading the novel up until I got to the conclusion. Um, his other books, The Association, The, um, the Store, I, re I loved those novels. So uh, I'm excited to... Uh, eventually read The Walking by Bentley Little. All right, um, let's go ahead and move on into some of my uh, children's and um, young adult books. Okay, L let's, uh, okay, th um, that, that, that's okay. All right, uh, I found this modern scholastic um horror book for uh, middle grade um, kids and it's called Strike 3 You're Dead by Josh Burke 
and there's a baseball on the cover. So I wonder if it has anything to do with sports. The tagline on the front reads, No baseball mystery is too weird for this middle school detective trio. Mm, okay. Uh, let's read the synopsis on back. Lenny Norbeck is a diehard baseball lover and Phillies fan. Unfortunately, he's no ball player himself. According to Lenny, he's the worst there ever was. That's how I feel about myself as a guitarist, actually. But he'd make a heck of an announcer. That's his dream. And he gets a chance to prove himself when, with the help of his loyal best friends, Mike and other Mike, he enters an armchair announcer contest and wins. The prize? He gets to be the live broadcaster for one inning at a Phillies game. That's dope. See, since I, I, I suck at, you know, music and everything, I'd like to be a band manager. So I, I, I feel like me and this kid can relate a little bit. Anyway, the game goes very wrong, though. Before Lenny can do his inning, a young, promising pitcher, fresh out of the minors, drops dead on the mound. The official cause of death is a heart attack, but Lenny has a hunch there's something more going on. So he and the Mikes set out to investigate. They, the suspects are many, and though the trio barks up a few wrong trees, they are right on the heels of the killer. Okay, that sounds pretty dope, actually. This sounds really good. <clears throat> Excuse me. This came out in 2014, so it's 10 years old at this point, but that sounds dope. All right, um, I'm going to throw that over there for now. Okay, so uh, I found this book. Um, it's a hardback, and it's called More Tales to Tremble By. Um, it's a hardback, and it's... Um, I think I might have actually shown you this before in my last video. I thought it was newer than that. Never mind. I'll move on. Okay, so um, a, a good while ago, a long time ago, actually, um, I found this uh, Avon Camelot book um, by Mary Downing Hahn, and the book is called The Doll in the Garden, A Ghost Story. Well, I found this, <clears throat> and I featured it in one of my book haul videos from a while ago. Well, I found the same book in an alternate, more modern cover, <clears throat> The Doll in the Garden, A Ghost Story. And uh, this one was printed by Clarion Books, and I'm not, the pages are so white and pristine, the cover's in, like, perfect condition. Someone wrote a one or an I on the inner cover, but other than that, I mean, this is in, I would say, near mint condition. And uh, it has a whole list of... Um, other books by Mary Downing Hahn, and it's actually cool to see that there are some that I don't have because I have a whole video on my channel of all my Mary Downing Hahn books, and I'm seeing some titles that I don't have. Um, but uh, this one was printed in 2007. So this is, um, <clears throat> I mean, gosh, it's almost 20 years old at this point, but it looks good. I mean, it looks modern to me. Um, the next thing I want to show you is my R.L. Stein books. I found a Goosebumps Horrorland book, and it's called The Wizard of Ooze, because goodness knows R.L. Stein writes to write about, you know, some kind of creepy ooze. <clears throat> um, but this is book number 17, so I now have, um, almost all of, uh, or I now have... I don't know how many books there are in this series. Um, is there um, something in here that talks of... Yeah, there's a book number 18, and it's called Slappy New Year. Um, I'm surprised I don't have that one, but I definitely didn't have book number 17, uh, The Wizard of Ooze, and this is in like perfect condition. This is mint. No one wrote anything on the inside. The pages are still white and pristine the spine is a hundred percent as healthy as the day this book was printed um i'm still missing i want to say i'm missing book number nine um 12 or i'm missing book 9 11 and 12 
and then uh, apparently book number 18 I don't know if there's a 19 or not but yeah uh, I have um I have this so that's cool then I found some uh, Fear Street reprints that I didn't already have. Um, well, actually, I did already have. Um, so I read um, R.L. Stein's Fear Street book, The New Girl. I think I read that two years ago, and I also did a book review, and it's up on my channel. You can watch it, and I showed you the original cover, um, and I showed you this reprint, and... Uh, I found this, and this is in mint condition, so I think that somebody bought these books, never read them, and then just decided to donate them. Uh, the spine and the cover offer resistance when I try to open the pages, so this is in mint condition. And the same is true for the rest. I also found a secret admirer, and I already had this book in this edition. I also have the original cover as well, but um, <clears throat> same thing mint condition uh resistance when i try to open it um and then uh, i did not have this but um well i mean i have the original cover but uh i now have the best friend in this edition same thing mint condition and then um all night party well i have all night party i, I mean i have the original obviously and then i have uh this edition as well but then i found this copy that's in mint condition whereas the other copy that i have in the same edition it, it's a little bit more it has a few more signs of use whereas this is mint so it, it's actually really cool to you know have found these in you know such mint condition all right um i'm almost done with the books i do have a few more and give me a sec i'm so sorry all right um just to simplify, let, let's get this out of the way. So there's an author that um, I kind of just discovered named Elvira Woodruff. Okay. And I've found some of her books over the years, and I've featured her books in some of my book haul videos. Um, books such as Ghosts Don't Get Goosebumps. Okay. Um, and uh, The Magnificent Mummy Maker. Now, I have the Magnificent Mummy Maker with this Apple, uh, <clears throat> um, Scholastic Apple Fiction Edition. And then I have another one in the Apple Chillers Edition where the cover looks like this. And it's the same book, The Magnificent Mummy Maker. Okay. So I've had these books for a couple of years now. Um, you, uh, probably saw those book hauls where I brought them home. And then um, this Elvira Woodruff lady um, had other books as well. I, I believe she's passed away, if I'm not mistaken. I, I, I hope I'm wrong, but I think I looked her up and I found out that she had passed away. Well, um, she also has this book, The Orphan of Ellis Island. And that's when it occurred to me that I had heard of her because throughout my school years, like when I was in public school as a kid, um, I remember... Uh, some of my teachers had um, a few copies of this in their classrooms on the bookshelves that we students were allowed to grab and read during downtime or quiet time or in between assignments or whatever. And yeah, uh, actually, um, middle school, some of my middle school teachers had multiple copies of this book in their classrooms. And I just remember seeing it on their shelves in the classroom. So, um, Elvira Woodruff, um, wrote those books. I have these books, but I found two more of her books today. And where the heck are the rest? Where, where the heck did the rest go? Okay. I found this one and it's called the Christmas doll. Um, and I think it, uh, sounds pretty good. This came out in the year 2000. So I would have been in middle school by then, but I don't think I was reading, middle grade books at that time i think i was reading young adult or adult books and it's another vintage apple uh paperback um that i like but you know it's by elvira woodruff and so it's nice to have another elvira Wood woodruff book in my collection um I'll, I'll go ahead and read the summary on the back for you it reads lucy and glory wolcott are sisters and the best of friends they have no one but each other to rely on 
they have little to eat and their nights are cold and damp. To keep their spirits up, Lucy invents stories about the family she barely remembers and a lost doll named Morning Glory, who Lucy is sure they will find again one day. When a deadly fever sweeps through the workhouse where the girls live, Lucy and Glory flee for their lives to the mean streets of London. Now they must learn how to survive on their own. One day, the sisters find an old discarded doll by the river that Glory is sure is their long-lost doll. But Morning Glory is no ordinary doll, and she works her magic on everyone around her. Okay, so that sounds dope. All right. Um, give, uh, I'm terribly sorry, but give me just one moment, uh, please. I'm I'm so sorry about that. Um, I didn't realize that it actually was here. I found one more Elvira Woodruff book, and it's called George Washington's Socks. And um, I guess this one used to be owned by a community center, but it's in great condition, except for these stupid stickers on the cover. Um, it's in otherwise mint condition. I think I'm going to take a page out of Cameron Chaney's book, and no, I'm not talking about Autumn Crow. I'm talking about how he says that he uses Goo Gone sometimes to get rid of these uh, stickers, and I think I'm going to try the same thing because I am tired of peeling stickers off the cover of these books and getting paint from the book covers stripped off, okay? It's my kryptonite. So um, that's cool to have found another vintage Apple paperback in excellent mint condition and again by elvira woodruff and her name's elvira you know that's metal or well i mean it's goth but whatever i'll take it and this is from 1991 that was a good year for you know vintage apple paperbacks that was a good year and a few more um, vintage apple paperbacks so there's this author named todd strasser <clears throat> and Todd Strasser wrote a book called Help, I'm Trapped in the, the Teacher's Body. That's his big one. But I found this one, Help, I'm Trapped in an Alien's Body. And, uh, I mean, look at that cover. And then um, he also has this one called Help, I'm Trapped in My Sister's Body. And it's, you know, another Freaky Friday thing. I mean, I guess they all are. And then some other author... Um, who's not Todd Strasser, it was like in the year 2000 or 2001, like, let's see, um, this one, Help I'm Trapped in an Alien's Body, this one came out in 98, and then Help I'm Trapped in My Teacher's Body, this one came out in 97, and then Help I'm Trapped in the Teacher's, or My Teacher's Body, that one is even older than these, so I think that Todd Strasser was just kind of taking that Freaky Friday idea and capitalizing on it at the time <clears throat> because uh, Help, I'm Trapped in My Teacher's Body was um, kind of a big seller for him and for Scholastic Apple uh, Fiction. <clears throat> well, um, some other author, like in the year 2000, wrote Help, I'm Trapped in a Vampire's Body where some child got trapped in the body of a man who turned out to be a vampire. And I have that one as well. Um, let's see. Almost done. Okay. Uh, 
and then um, the last of my no 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 uh, it's not last of middle grade uh, I found another shadow zone book and I found another one of these recently and it was like beat to crap um, but this one is a uh, in pretty decent condition um, and it's got a really cool looking cover and it's called alien under my bed and uh, the tagline on the front is funny Haley is feeling alien aided <laughs> like it okay all right um i'm not gonna oh ooh, 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 ooh. look at that look at that oh that's a shame but you know what i can fix that with uh uh, packing tape. I just felt something on my ear. Okay. All right. Now I really enjoy finding these old school Bantam Skylark books as well. And this one is called the revenge of the wizard's ghost. Wow. So a wizard can totally be scary, but if the wizard dies and comes back as a ghost, that can make it even scarier. And this one is written by an author named uh, John Belairs, and he's the author of The Spell of the Sorcerer's Skull. I think I have that one. Um, I'll have to check, but I'm pretty sure I have that one. Uh, let's see, what year is this one from? This one is from 1985. Wow, it's older than me. Cool. Let's read the summary on back. Uh, there's no tagline on the front, and that's the cover. It's just a kid across the street from a haunted house. All right, um, here's the summary on back. Something horrible is happening to Johnny. He snaps at his dear friend, Professor Childermass. Childermass. He says odd things to his best friend, Fergie. He walks in his sleep and hears strange noises. And then Johnny Dixon suddenly collapses into a weird sleep with an ugly sneer upon his lips. Professor Childermass soon learns the terrifying truth. Poor Johnny is the victim of the evil spirit of despicable and dead Warren Windrow. Somehow, the spell has to be broken before it's too late. The Professor and Fergie race to the town of Van Twiller and to the frightening old Windrow estate. But dark demonic forces are waiting, and before they can save Johnny's life, they face a horrifying fight for their own lives. Okay, and this is in pretty good condition. I mean, it's a little shy of being near mint, but it's okay. Um, the cover, uh, the, the, the front cover, <clears throat> um, is a little bit weaker, um, but as long as I, it's read carefully, I, I think that it'll be fine. Um, but yeah, um, so he, here you go. Uh, I'm glad to add another uh, Bantam Skylark middle grade horror book to my collection. I love that. Uh, let's see. I found um, this one, and it's called What Eric Knew by J James Howe, the author of Banicula. And great looking cover. Um, there's a woman wearing a veil at, and a sun hat in a graveyard at night. And, um, you know, it's got a great looking cover. Um, it's an Avon Flare printing. And I'll, I'll read the summary and back on this one because uh, I, I like the cover so much that I want to read the book. Sebastian Barth discovers there's more than a ghost haunting the dark cemetery. Things had been kind of dull for Sebastian since his good friend Eric moved away. Eric always had a way of keeping things lively, probably because he knew a lot about the town's long-buried secrets. So when Sebastian starts getting coded messages from his old friend Eric, he figures he'd better find out what they mean. Sebastian quickly enlists the help of a couple of friends to try and unravel the mystery of Eric's bewildering clues and how they relate to the ghostly figure who appears regularly in the church cemetery. But trying to solve the mystery of the dark figure lurking in the cemetery 
leads Sebastian and his friends smack into another more dangerous adventure. Okay, this sounds like a good one. Uh, this is also from 1985, so another one that's older than me, um, but it looks really good. Um, this thing is beat to crap. I mean, the, the, the cover is coming off the spine. Um, the, sp the spine's holding onto the pages okay, but most of the corners of the pages are bent. I think one of the pages is torn. This thing is not in good condition, but you know, I picked it up for less than two bucks at a thrift store today, so I'll, I'll take it. I mean, you know, it, it'll make a good reading copy. If I love it enough, maybe I'll spend a few extra bucks and buy a more mint copy online. Um, almost done. I got three more. Okay. So, um, one more, uh, vintage Apple paperback, um, the covers, um, I, I would call it very good. Um, it's starting to kind of crease right there, but not quite creased. I think it was dropped is what happened. And this one is called The Telltale Summer of Tina C by Lila Pearl. And the tagline on the front reads, It seems like everyone is trying to ruin Tina's summer. Now, let's see um, what year did this come out. 1975. Okay, so for a book that came out in 1975, I mean, this is in excellent condition. I'll take it. All right. Um, so the summary on the back reads, Can a 12-year-old, 5-foot-9-inch girl who thinks she has horsey teeth find happiness for a summer? It's bad enough that Tina's mother and father get separated. And Tina can't understand what her dad sees in Rosebud, his new girlfriend. Tina's brother Arthur spends all of his time either stuffing his mouth with food or bugging Tina. On top of all this, that new girl Carla is trying to butt into the private club Tina started with her best friends. Tina thinks nothing worse could happen except maybe finding the creature from the Black Lagoon in her closet. But then she finds out she's being sent away for the rest of the summer. And, and, and that sounds interesting. Uh, wow, the spine is extremely healthy, holding onto the pages. Just great. The pages have yellowed a bit with the age, but man, this is in wonderful condition for a 1975 children's paperback. Okay, and then I found this one by Catherine Burt, and it's called The Scariest Stories You've Ever Heard, Part 2. So I guess there's a part one that I don't have, but that's the cover. And um, <clears throat> it's got stories in here, stories such as, uh, and I don't think that they're by um, <clears throat> famous authors or anything like that. I think they're all by her. And the first story is called The Doctor's Visitor. Story two, the Brenda's New Dress. Story three, The Deadly Dare. Story 4, The Doggy's Treat. Story 5, Terror Trip. Story 6, The Last Initiation. Story 7, The Rose Garden. Story 8, The Man on the Dock. Story 9, The Hitchhiker. Okay, that's probably a good one. Story 9, Trick or Treat. And story number 10, It Walks at Midnight. Okay, that sounds good. And this um, book was from 1989. And um, it's okay. I mean, you know, the cover has pro seen some better days. Uh, the spine has seen some better days. But the spine is also holding onto the pages um, just as well as it did the day it was born. And uh, the cover's not in too much danger of uh, falling off, even though you can see there are some creases right here where the cover front cover meets the spine and then the last book that i have is a joan lowry nixon book and it's called the other side of dark now i don't have this one and it's still got the hastings sticker on the back and um the hastings sticker is totally faded i can't even see the um price that hastings was selling this for back when can't believe it's been 10 years since Hastings has gone away since they went out of business I mean that is really sad 
because you know on payday payday weekend <clears throat> you could bet your sweet behind that you could find me at Hastings but you know what I also applied to work there a few times and they never hired me never called me back or anything so that's why they went out of business because that's what they get it's called karma <clears throat> you don't hire me and I want to work there you go out of business that's what happens I'm trying to tear this uh, Hastings sticker off so I can read the rest of the synopsis because it's a Joan Lowry Nixon so it's probably good all right here's the synopsis on back no tagline on the front Stacy wakes up in a room that's not hers, in a body she doesn't recognize, to discover she's been in a coma for four years. Her mother is dead, murdered, and Stacy, recovering from a gunshot wound, is the only eyewitness. She can recall only a shadowy face so far. But the killer is not about to let her reveal his identity. Wow, okay. Okay, that sounds good. Um, yeah, the spine is perfectly healthy, holding onto the pages. Some dude named Kenneth Brown had a stamp with his name on it and stamped the bottom of the pages and the top of the pages. Wow, okay. Alrighty, well, um, so that's it as far as my books go. Um, I do have a couple of DVDs that I'll show you, though. Um, here's the first two. Uh, where did the other ones go? Oh, here's another one. Where'd the other ones go? Okay, well, no time to waste. All right, um, I found a copy of Beavis and Butthead Do America. Now, I mean, I've already seen this movie. Like, I saw it in theaters when I was a kid. Um, I watched it, like, a year ago with my friends. I, I watched it, like, three times back when it was on Netflix. But it's not on Netflix anymore. Um, and uh, uh, a year ago, it was on Paramount Plus with my... Um, so that's when I watched it with my friends. But it, it could leave that platform at any time and I'm getting sick of the the new way we do things where you know you pay a subscription for a platform like say Netflix or whatever and then time goes on and that movie isn't on there anymore and so I, I'm just I'm done I'm over it I'm not doing it anymore I'm gonna own my media now, I don't need to have all the movies and shows that I have on DVD because I'll probably never watch some of them again. But something like this <clears throat> that's near and dear to my heart, I gotta, you know, own the physical media for. Then um, <clears throat> I have this, and this is um, the third, um, <clears throat> or it's a three film set of the Halloween movies. And this is the later Halloween movie, so it's got Halloween H2O, Halloween Resurrection, and Halloween The Curse of Michael Myers. And, um... I... I haven't... I've seen Halloween H2O and Halloween Resurrection, but I think that was like 4th, 5th, 6th grade, something like that. And... Um, that's a franchise that I've decided I'll, I'll give it a chance as an adult. I know it's a mess of a franchise with all these different timelines, but with as many people out there that like it, I'll give it a chance. I'll check it out. I'll, I'll see if the hype is warranted or not. And then I have this movie, 30 Days of Night with Josh Hartnett. 
I um, remember the comic book or the graphic novel. Um, I remember when the movie came out. I had a friend in high school who was a fan of the graphic novel and was looking forward to the movie coming out. I never read the graphic novel. I never saw the movie. Um, but, you know, time has gone on. And, you know, I, I mean, I'm a huge Josh Hartnett fan, okay? Ever since The Faculty. He was also in Halloween uh, H2O. Um, but I, I've been a huge Josh Hartnett fan. Not huge Josh Hartnett fan. But, I mean, I, I, I'm a fan of his you know, because of uh, the faculty. So I look forward to watching that movie. And then um, Creep Show, okay? And this is um, an anthology, and it's got five stories co written by George Romero and Stephen King. And I know I've seen this. Um, I know I saw it as a teenager. I know I saw it again in my early 20s, but I just don't remember it all that well. Um, probably because I was like, hammered when I watched it uh, in my early 20s because I was in my early 20s so of course I was hammered but nevertheless I have it on DVD now and I plan on watching it soon okay and uh, I think that's it for the book haul and the movie haul we already went over the uh, we already went over the um, you know Halloween spirit haul um, and uh, I think I'll just do another video where I show off my uh, my Jackson performer. Um, I'll, I'll do that in a separate video. I'll go ahead and end it here and let you go. Thank you guys for watching. As always, horns up and peace out.